great. That was you missed the first one. So I'm Jaspreet Singh from the l 3 Research Center in Leibniz University, Hanover, and I'm here to talk to you about our approach for interpreting textual rankers. So let me break down the title of the paper. We start with local interpretability, which a lot of people here are familiar with. Uh, local interpretability is trying to explain a single decision made by a complex machine learning model. So if you have a neural network that's classifying images and you ask it why, you could use a method like integrated gradients to get some sort of heat map visualization, like you see over here. The next part of the title talks about model agnostic local interpretability. That means we have no access to the model parameters, to the training data, or to the training algorithm. So a method like integrated gradients can't really be applied. A really popular approach in this setting is LIME, which was referred to in the previous talk and will be referred to later on as well. And I'm going to do my best to just give you a quick um, explanation of what it is. So essentially, if you consider you have a black box classifier that's trying to classify points as blue and red, as you can see in this image right here, um, when you want to explain a single data point as the red plus that you see that's boldened out, you don't have to try and explain the entire decision boundary. The idea is very simple. You want to get a local decision boundary and trying to get this local decision boundary is much easier. To do that, essentially, you move to an interpretable feature space, and you also train a model on data points which are around this point that you're interested in, and get a local, simple, linear model. As you can tell, the dashed line is a much simpler model to explain than the complex line that you see between blue and red, and the explanation now is not really a heat map anymore, but it's the simple model itself. So this method will be described by the other authors too, later on, I mean, in the other presenters, and it's also inspiration for our approach. Um, the setting that we find ourselves in is search. So in search, you basically have a query. You have a bunch of items that you need to rank based on that query. And usually the ranking is done by a machine learning model. So the machine learning model is responsible for determining which item is most relevant to the query and which one isn't, and then put that in a ranked list. Right? So we're interested in textual ranking, which means that the query is text, as well as the items that we're ranking are text too. So there are different types of ranking models. Um, we're going to focus quite a bit on point-wise models, although our approach is applicable to all the other types of models. Point-wise models essentially take query text, document text, learn some sort of latent feature representation if you're using a neural network, and then try and predict a relevant score. And then to get a ranked list, you essentially sort by this score. Right? And this latent feature representation is usually uninterpretable, hard to understand. Right, so the last part of the paper title talks about intent modeling. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what search intents are and then tell you how they informed our modeling approach. So in information retrieval, um, there's this concept of a search intent. Essentially, when we go to a search engine, we usually have an information need in our head which is quite expressive. So if you look at this talk, you say, oh, I want a quick introduction to learning to rank. Um, I want to understand it better, right? But when you actually go to a search engine, you just type in learning to rank. So now the heavy lifting falls on the ranking model to try and just determine what do you really need, what is really relevant, and what isn't. And this is what makes these models complex. And this is why they need a lot of data to try and figure out these patterns. So a search intent is essentially this large piece of text that I showed you around learning to rank. Right? It gives you more context. And our central idea to our approach is that if you have this large context, if you have the full information need, trying to determine which document is relevant is much easier. You essentially have more words, for instance, that help you decide if this document is more relevant than the other. And that's what was sort of informs our modeling approach too. Right, so I'm not gonna go into the details of the approach. I'm gonna give you an overview and also what makes a good explanation in our setting and then sort of come to the experiments. So going from left to right, our approach is essentially this. We wanna do local model agnostic interpretability for textual rankings. The locality for us is a single query, so you're interested in explaining the results for a given query. You have some sort of black box ranking model that gives you this ranked list output, and you ask the question why. The crux of our approach is quite simple. The query tends to be underspecified, so let's find the intent terms, or basically query expansion terms, which can specify this information need. Once you have a much larger information need, you can use very simple ranking models like TFIDF, proximity and position, to estimate the ranking that the black box did. So it's very much Lyme inspired if you're aware of it. So what is our explanation then? Our explanation is essentially the same as Lyme. It is the model itself that we try and figure out. So you have the terms which are added to the query, which gives you a more clear information need. So it's essentially those are the search intent terms. And then you have the scoring function that best approximates the ranking that the black box makes and you have to make a choice about which scoring function is best. And the idea behind the scoring function is that they need to be simple. They're usually based on simple statistics like term frequency, inverse document frequency, position and proximity that is inherently easy to understand. 
So what makes a good explanation? So how do we actually select these terms? Uh, and how do we select the scoring function? This is essentially what we optimize for in our method. We want the terms to be accurate. That is, these are the really the ones that influence the semantic match between query and document, not some other terms which might be correlated with them. And the second is you want high fidelity. You want the simple ranking function in conjunction with the terms to be able to reproduce the decision that the black box does. So if you can get an explanation model with the right terms, with a simple scoring function that's able to recreate this ranked list, usually measured using a rank correlation metric like Kendall's Tau, then you know that your explanation model is pretty good. If you can't, you already know your explanation is bad. I have some slides which explain the method, but I'm not going to go through that right now. Instead, they're there for completeness, and if anyone's interested, I implore you to check out the paper, uh, all the slides. Um, I'm going to jump to the experiments. In the paper, we have some quantitative experiments where we measure accuracy and fidelity. I'm going to skip that part and instead go on to a qualitative um, uh, study that we did to actually compare two neural networks. So the main questions that we wanted to ask is, what is the intent of the query according to the ranker? Why is the document actually relevant to the query once we know the explanation model? And why is the document, a certain document D ranked above another document X for a given query Q depending on the ranker itself? So to answer the first question, this is a table taken directly from the paper. What you see on the left is essentially a set of queries which are sampled from our data set. You see two titles over there, DRMM and DESM. These refer to two different neural ranking models. And what you see on the right is the intent explanation. These are the terms that our model picks up to describe the full intent behind this query as perceived by the ranker. So for the first query that you can see, Fidel Castro, DRMM seems to focus more on his health, whereas DESM focuses more on his brother, Raul Gonzalez. These are two models trained on exactly the same data set, but they seem to focus on different things, and that's, this is how you sort of unearth that. For, look, for the next query, how to find the mean, clearly DRMM nails it, whereas DESM is completely off. And this is a good explanation as to why you get really bad results for DESM and not for DRMM. So for the second case where you want to see why a particular document is relevant, we took the same document for, for the same query for two different models. So this is exactly the same document, they're just snippets. And you see that both of them are relevant to the query, but for very different reasons. If you look at the terms highlighted in orange, that gives you the reasons why that particular document was relevant for that model for that query. And finally, if you do have the simple scoring function as well, which tends to be additive, you can essentially get easy visualizations which tell you the difference between ranked documents. So if you want to compare document two against document five, it's quite easy to look at histograms like this and sort of say, okay, this is probably the reason why two is more relevant than five. And that brings me to the end of my talk. Thank you for listening, and I hope for some interesting questions later.